A certain wrestler was keep injuring Alexa Bliss. I was so angry. I was like, no. Mm -hmm. I was like, she cannot do this anymore. She said, pro wrestling is a fake fighting. It's never a real fight. This got so many people talking. Nah, Jax is like, I'm gonna risk my job and knock her the f out. You better take a f seat real quick, dude. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. Welcome everyone to Rindwell, this is DS. And the Sriracha Muchacha. See? Sriracha, Sriracha. Oh, I gotta see it! Hello, my star. And very special guest, one of my favorite, Evil Sierra! Yay! Yay. Evil! Evil! <laughs> I met Sierra actually when she was still in high school. So I thought that was like really cool. I'm like, oh my god. I think you were like 16 or 17 when, yeah. I, when I met her. And we've been in a plenty of matches together, but never had a one-on-one -on -one match. Like, oh. yeah. yeah, which is crazy. That's like, crazy. You know, somebody book it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get into this week's news and rumor. There's a lot. So WWE, the E stands for essential because it is an essential <laughs> business by Florida. <laughs> Jerry Demings, the mayor of Orange County, Florida, was having a press meeting. And then he said, initially, when they reviewed WWE, they were put as a non-essential business. But after another review, now they're deemed as an essential business. So when WWE stars are like driving around going to Performance Center in this whole situation, they have a little letter that they can show the police officer saying that we are essential business. Seriously? That's a little funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's great that they're still able to, you know, put stuff out on TV for everybody and, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. have their people like, you know, keep working and stuff. But that's just funny that... Who would ever thought that in a million years that WWE wrestlers would be marked as essential? So, yeah, right. I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, at least... Like you said, they're producing entertainment for everybody during this uncertainty times. At least there's one thing that's consistent, and that's wrestling. I hope all the superstars are safe during this time. All the crew members are safe. I also hope that they don't feel like pressured. Yeah. It. You know, like if they don't feel yeah. like if they feel sick themselves or they're not feeling 100% or like they're like, oh, I don't know about this. I hope they're just like, oh, you better, you know, or or else. Totally. Hopefully it's more of a more chill and not so pressured. Yeah, environment. you'd think so. You'd hope so. With this whole essential business stuff going on, WWE is now back to live. They're doing the live tapings of Raw and SmackDown and NXT from this week on. During this past month, the biggest war course of the entire WWE has been Asuka. So the Wrestle Talk reported that Vince McMahon has noticed Asuka in recent weeks. She she impressed Vince McMahon as well as the other higher ups in WWE. Noted as someone reliable and someone they can trust during this hard time. It's so interesting to see just a couple years ago reports were coming out about how Vince was uncertain about Asuka due to her English skills, but now she's a star that they can just send out for commentary and promos. Hopefully this means something big is coming for Asuka and hopefully her partner Kyrie Sane too. Now we're gonna get into this whole saga of like shoots and works and everything, but it all starts from Paige's Twitch stream, where Paige invited tons of female wrestlers and WWE to have a little kiki. During that kiki, Nia Jax revealed that she went to management because a certain wrestler was keep injuring Alexa Bliss. Wait, I'm not gonna mention any names, but Lexi, well, other than Lexi's name, <laughs> she's not on right now, she was continuously getting hurt by a, in a certain angle with somebody. And I remember her con not saying anything specifically because she wanted to be a team player. Me personally, from the outside looking in, I was so angry. I was like, no, mm -hmm. I was like, she cannot do this anymore. I had to go to the people, to the higher ups and, and I had to put down, you know, a stern foot and said, listen, like Lexi is five foot nothing, a hundred pounds getting thrown around like a little rag doll and injured every night. I was like, put me in. I'm a six foot, 300 pound bitch. <laughs> Now, Naya didn't name the names, but it's pretty clear it's Ronda Rousey. Ooh. I actually didn't know how all this started. I didn't know it was all. Yeah, this thing. is the first time I'm hearing this, funny. honestly. So that Twitch stream is now down. So WWE took it down. Uh, I actually downloaded the whole stream. It was very interesting. Natalia <laughs> talking about her receiving that farting gimmick and how frustrating oh, it was. It was a really dark time in my career. And then the funniest thing is Peyton Royce is like trying to be super serious, but she like 
couldn't stop laughing in the middle. <laughs> anyway, so this is how it all started. Nia Jax basically revealed that Ronda Rousey, not naming names, has been injuring Alexa Bliss and that's why she was out for a year. After that, Ronda Rousey did an interview and she said, I did all the live events. I was only home a day and a half a week. I just don't think it's worth it. And we didn't need the money. And she continues saying, I love performing. I love the girls. I love being out there. But at the end of the day, I was just like, F this fans, I'm done. And then she continues saying, hey girls, I love what you girls are doing. I'm gonna try and take all my momentum and push you girls as far as I can, like a little bird, fly. And I'm going home after that. I was just fucking exhausted and I was gonna be really happy when this was done well and done. <laughs> so this interview enraged a lot of fans. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, I think Dave Meltzer loves talking about it. Dave Meltzer keeps saying that Ronda Rousey's attitude towards WWE fans have changed when she got booed out of the arena. But anyway, the saga continues. So Ronda Rousey, after that whole situation, went on Twitter and she said, hashtag kayfabe breaker. She said, pro wrestling is a fake fighting. It's never a real fight. Fans are tiptoeing around pro wrestlers, soft egos, and they're ignoring how much it upsets real Real fighters. This prompted tons of wrestler. Lana was upset. Nia Jax was upset. Nia Jax was like, I'm gonna risk my job and knock her the f out. Alexa yeah. Bliss posted the video of her being out for a year and she was like, you called this fake? It was a whole uproar. This got so many people talking. Like people that are not even involved in wrestling. Like ESPN was talking about oh, really? it. Like I was like, what is going on? But I actually think like this wouldn't have been as big of a deal if there was like other sports going on or like there was a regular <laughs> WrestleMania. Yeah. But I think everybody's just getting so stir crazy that they just want to jump on anything that's juicy yeah. or like anything they can bite onto. They're like, oh, it's something to talk about, something I could bitch about, something I yeah. could, you know, express my opinion about. This would have probably gotten attention, but not this much attention yeah. if everything was normal. But it was actually kind of like amusing seeing all the like people who are not even wrestlers like <laughs> yeah. jump in on it and like get take give their take on it. So oh. I think that was like the interesting part of it. For me, I was just like, this is a great way for Rhonda to return as a heel. Like that's okay. all I kept on thinking. It was like, this is a great way for her to return as a heel. So it was my boyfriend who, cause I had no idea. It was my boyfriend who told me about it. And then I had to like, look it up on Twitter. Because I was like, what? Like Ronda Rousey's like shitting on WWE. I like, what the hell? <laughs> so like, I saw like the interview and all that stuff. I don't know. I thought I was first like, I guess take it back and like thought it was like a shoot because I was like, like she hasn't been there for a while. Like why is she all of a sudden just coming up with all this? Me and my boyfriend kind of talked about it and he was like, well, I bet it has to be a work. It has to be a work. Like, you know, why would you just shit on, you know, this company that gave you so much? So we're kind of like hoping. And then, you know, when they brought it up in the segment tonight, I was yeah. like, I'm like, okay, thank God, because that would have <laughs> been like awful if yeah. this was all like, Real, real. <laughs> I think it was solidified once they brought it up in the promo team. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like, oh, whew, okay. Rhonda took a back step a little bit because she tweeted out good night, rowdy ones, and jar bony marks without a life that don't know it. A work when you work a work and work yourself into a shoot marks. So I think she's basically confirming it's a work. Yeah. By going in a shoot direction. But she also said it on Total Divas multiple times when she is on social media, she is there as a Rhonda Rousey, the character. So yeah. I think that also, I mean, not saying the reality show is real, but I think we can get a little like direction of what she does with social media. To add fuel to the Ronda Rousey saga, Alexa Bliss recently spoke to CBS Sports to discuss her honest thoughts on the whole issue. And things get pretty pointed. This is what she said. I'll just start by saying I like Ronda. We've always gotten along. I have a lot of respect for her and what she does and what she's been through. It was just the use of the word fake, especially because we welcome Ronda Ronda with open arms. We all wanted to see her succeed. But with that, we had a whole documentary based on my concussion that Ronda gave on how I didn't know if I was ever going to be medically cleared. The thing is, you know, you're only as good as the person you're in the ring with. That stings. It's kind of disrespectful that we were so respectful of what she did coming in and we were respectful of her time in WWE. If she comes back to WWE, great. We would all love to work with her again. Just limit the use of the F word. This was very much the Tyra Banks realness. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? I mean, like I say oh, so many times about it, like we're talking about it. 
people are there talking about it and it publicity is good publicity so it gets the people talking gets yeah. her name back in there in the mix well you know who knows if she is going to return but gets her back into the mix of things whether positive or negative hey we're still talking about it it was yeah. just so funny how everybody's like a huge uproar and everything yeah everybody's out of nowhere we're gonna talk about Nia Jax a little bit more because Nia Jax has some interesting interaction on social media so Killer Cross was on Twitter and he responded to a fan saying that Liv Morgan looks like Scarlett Bordeaux Killer Cross was like great question <laughs> So that's like a little shade towards Liv Morgan. And then Nia Jax out of nowhere popped up and she was like, you better take a f***ing seat real quick, dude. Oh my God. Jeez. I feel like she's such a savage. Like, like that tweet and then their tweet at Rhonda, I was like, whoo. Yeah, she just like came back and she's like, f*** it, I'm not holding anything back. Yeah. Use your, use your all, y'all. I was like, oh, all right then. My favorite one of Nia Jax being savage is, I don't know if it's one of the announcing team. Do you know who like cheated on the girlfriend? Oh yeah, one of the announcer guys. I can't remember which one it was. So basically the girl revealed a text and it was like, I'm gonna face you or something. And then Nia Jax has been using that on everything. I'm gonna FF you. <laughs> Oh my god. So she's a savage. Don't mess with her. She's not like most girls. Yeah. <laughs> the new signees. On the impact side, we have Kylie Ray. Yay. Evil Sierra is not gonna do that. No, I am. <laughs> so impact Wrestling just announced that the top indie wrestler Kyrie Ray, Chicago's own, has signed a long-term contract with the promotion. And on Impact, she made her debut and she had the fun segment and she defeated Cassandra Golden by submission. Yay! Go yeah. Kylie! She's yeah, awesome. Yay! No, yeah. good for her. That's exciting. Yeah. I'm very happy for her. Not like that AEW wasn't you know, something to showcase her, make her shine, but you know, how she said, like Impact feels like her home. I almost feel like she would fit more with Impact. She'll elevate any women's division where she's at, no matter where she's at, she's gonna elevate that division. But I'm glad that she's somewhere that she feels comfortable and that will give her lots of awesome new matchups that we probably wouldn't see otherwise. So. Yeah. And her interaction with Soo Young was so interesting. Yeah. Oh, it was so cute. <laughs> yeah. It was so cute. I loved it. Yeah. The whole division is just so vibrant and so exciting. On the AW side, we have Anna J. The star of the show <laughs> who uh, got signed by AEW. And I think she got signed because she is like a local to Atlanta and they're doing all those like tapings. So I think mm -hmm. she definitely took advantage of the situation. And okay. I think that just proves like you never know right place, right time. And yes. whenever the opportunity comes, you better take it because you never know what could come out of it. So she debuted a couple of weeks ago as Anna J with two Ys and they told her to drop the Y. So she's just, <laughs> instead of Anna J, she's Anna J. Jay. <laughs> so congrats to Anna J. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about some other shit show that went down today. Remember Amy Weber? She was on the first season of Diva Search. I think she made some cool quotes out of that Dista Diva segment. You need to learn how to lick a pie. You gotta learn how to eat some pie. <laughs> No. Oh God. <laughs> I don't remember. What I remember her from was her being JBL's assistant when he was world champion. That's where I remember her the most from. So she has a short stint on SmackDown. She feuded with the fellow Diva Search contestants, Joy Giovanni. After a short stint, she was gone. Recently, she made a video saying that she's going to expose everything she's dealt with in WWE. And basically, she revealed the reason she quit WWE was because of the incident that happened in a plane. Basically, she she got injured during a practice match with Joy Giovanni, so she was lying down. And I'm gonna go ahead and call people out because this is a truthful video. Randy Orton decided to come up behind my chair and he slammed into it like a linebacker so hard that I landed on the floor of the airplane. I was awoken by someone pouring a drink in my face. I looked up and I saw Edge with a partially drank drink in his hand, there was a little bit left, and it was the same color that was basically all over me. So I said, come on, you wanna fight me? Let's go, you wanna be a man? So after that whole situation, she was like, I'm, I can't deal with this company. I booked an airplane flight, went home, and that was the end of it. Jeez. <laughs> 
I know. I think it's always so crazy how you hear all the stuff happen, like obviously like years later. But I mean, I could see why people don't come out and say it right away. Yeah, and it's probably like scary, or what if nobody believes me, and yeah. like you don't want to be like the one who you know, like says all that. But I mean, we weren't there, so we really, really don't know what happens. But also, like I do want to say that then probably the environment and how women are seen and treated are completely different now than yeah. they were yeah. back then, for sure. But I definitely do know that probably more shit happened back then that we probably don't know about that nobody has said. Can you guys tell me about like the ribbing culture? Is that indie scenes too? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Probably not as vicious as yeah. like, you hear. Like nobody's like shitting in anybody's bag yeah. <laughs> or anything. Yeah. Maybe but. less with the girls. Like I know the guys, I don't know if they've like really gone through it, but I've heard some like awful things that people, you know, would plan like to rib someone else. But I know with the girls, it's not that I haven't been even involved in like a rib with mm -hmm. another female wrestler. I feel like it's just with the men that it's more like funny, haha, -ha, like let's just <laughs> mess around each other and like screw you, I'm gonna, you know, pour a drink in your bag type thing. But it's it's very common in indie wrestling that I've been a okay. part of I've seen. If it's just the women and stuff, we're just like, you know, bullshitting around their hanging yeah. out and stuff. But most of the time when it is like a rib involved, it's either always like the idea of one of the guys or the guys are like, hey, come help me rib this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. like that. Like, yeah. yeah, most of the ones I have been in involved in are all like super like, harmless like one time yeah. when i still lived in texas we duct taped some person's uh wallet like they, so they have to <laughs> yeah. like, duct tape you know, it's funny shit like that. Yeah, yeah yeah so it's yeah. never like super like hurtful or no, like malicious no. No, or anything yeah. like that like with the most i guess recent ribbing incident that i remember was the very first time i was in wrestling lena black uh storm grayson told her she better not got, get my name wrong because i get super pissed if you get get my name wrong because that <laughs> and lena kept yeah. on asking storm how do you say her name again how do you say her name again and the storm's like oh you didn't hear she gets pissed she's gonna skip oh, you if you don't get her name wrong. and then she was so nervous she's like oh my god what if i get her name wrong and all this Stuff. And then right before he, this one was like, I'm just with it. She's like, she's like, she's cool. Like, I'm just messing oh, with yeah. it. And then after the match, Elena Black came up to me and told me that. And I thought it was hilarious. I never seen anything, at least yeah. in my okay. experience, like something super malicious, no, or, like, yeah. hurtful, or like, I want to make sure you go down for this type of thing. It's always like, oh, yeah. haha, that yeah, was funny. It's, yeah, it's always like a little joke, like a little harmless. Yeah. yeah, what happened here seems like very much like hazing situation, like with fraternities. I mean, I've been through some hazing because I was in the military back in Korea and they're rough, especially with people involved in like harassment stuff. Like I had a guy put gum in my hair. I had what? a guy put spit in my drink. I mean, it, it was back in the day before women's right. movement and everything. I'm glad that this type of of nightmare stories are not happening anymore in the women's division. And I think this whole women evolution thing or women revolution was not only in ring stuff, but I think it's also lots of backstage stuff too. Yeah, like not totally. only like women get more opportunities in ring, but also yeah. women being treated with respect and as seen as an equal for your counterparts backstage as well. Coming from different ways, the culture is getting better. So that's that's definitely great. Okay, so that is this week's news and rumor. Thank you so much for joining. Sierra, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at pro wrestling underscore Sierra. No, wait, switch it. On Twitter, at real Sierra underscore and Instagram at pro wrestling underscore Sierra. You can find me at Paloma Star on Instagram, Twitter, and I guess I'll plug my TikTok too. Yes. TikTok too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find me at DS Shin and ring the bell DS on Twitter. All right. Bye. Bye.